who or what is a customer? That is what I call the most dangerous question uh, that you can ask the uh, the data data management uh, professionals because uh, it will absorb all of their potential free time and turn it into a, a a massive time sink that never gets resolved. The problem is that we have all these different business terms like customer or product or transaction or or agreement that we everybody thinks they know what it means, so nobody ever sits down to define what it means, and it ends up that in different scenarios and contexts, it has different meanings. So uh, an example I always like to give is, is uh, a company that I had some conversations with in which I spoke to the salespeople. They were a software company. Uh, I spoke to the salespeople. From their perspective, a, a customer is the person who pays for the product, but from the support uh, team, the customer is the person who's using the product. And you may have named customers and you may have seat customers. And in fact, in different, different scenarios, uh, the customer me meant completely different uh, things depending on, on how they were being, uh, uh, what the interaction was. And so if you try to come up with one definition of something that's got so many broad definitions in so many different contexts, you, you're going to create constraints that are going to prevent you from being able to make the most effective use of your data. Uh, so what we suggest is, is, is the determination of whether the use of a term is the same in the two different contexts. And if it is the same, then use the same definition. If it's not the same, then you're not talking about the same thing, in which case you have to get a qualified definition. So in, in the example that I gave before, you might say, we have a thing called a sales customer, which is the individual who pays for the product. And we have a, a concept called a support customer. And that's the person who uses the product and has the, has the ability to, to contact the customer support people uh, for questions. Uh, but if I'm counting customers, I can't take those two data sets and merge them together. So we have to have a little more precision on our definitions uh, and instead of, and, and instead of trying to come up with a single definition. What does big data mean to today's uh, business? And that's a tricky question because the, uh, the, the, as with any new or repackaged technology, there's a lot of hype around uh, the intent as opposed to its real usability. And, and big data, there's, there's a lot of promise in, in the capabilities that are provided by the big data platforms or the big data frameworks for for solving some real problems like like data accessibility uh, for massive data sets or or lowered barriers to to managing large data sets or the integration of large data sets or providing uh, a, a, an environment for for implementing algorithmic analytics that can't be done using simple queries like SQL queries uh, I think that there's some opportunities for maturation of this technology. I, there are businesses who who are kind of uh, grown up on these kinds of approaches. Uh, uh, you, you'd clearly be able to uh, to to call them out yourself uh, without my actually having to call them by name. But uh, they're the ones that you typically uh, see when you log on to any uh, computer. Uh, but they they're natural uses of that. So an example is is uh, 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 cataloging web pages and, and indexing web pages for search engines. Well, that's a natural application for a big data application because it's, it, it uses a huge amount of, of input information. It is uh, eminently uh, parallelizable and, uh, dis and, 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 and uh, 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 subject to, to data distribution, and the results can be accumulated as, as, as partial results. That naturally matches uh, maps to a MapReduce or a Hadoop MapReduce uh, application. Uh, other examples are, are, are uh, for uh, like, like uh, discovery, e-discovery in the, in the legal business, being able to have access to lots and lots of content and be able to search through a lot of content simultaneously. I mean, these are all natural applications. 
uh, in many environments, they're just trying to do the same applications, but trying to do it with a different set of technologies. And I think that if you're technology driven, no matter what you're doing, as opposed to being business driven, uh, you're going to be, uh, you're going to end up hitting the wall at some point when you're trying to move it back into production. So I think, uh, the promise of big data is for environments where, where they've got the capability to exploit commodity, uh, components and low cost, uh, uh, software or tools to provide the capability that they, they were not able to, to afford, uh, in the past or to take advantage of, of commodity capabilities that they couldn't take advantage of in the past and use that for analytical, for predictive purposes, for, for reporting, for even for just counting things. Uh, when we can figure out what types of applications, uh, business applications are, are nicely suited to, to these big data environments, I think that we'll start to see much more innovative use of, of these techniques. And, uh, I think, uh, somewhere I've got a, a, an article that I wrote about uh, what types of applications are nicely suited to, to big data environments, and I'm sure we'll be able to dig out a, uh, a nice link for that and post it somewhere as well.